profit from ZNBC. A universal language. Profit from it. He fires the question. How much longer can this rally last? When will they come? We're seeing some good news coming out. To bring you the very latest. Here's what's going on in Nasdaq at the moment. It's really just a question of timing. It's a technical squeeze coming about. He's European market reps Nigel Roberts, along with his stock watchers. They'll sum up the sessions. I think he most active. Plus, update you on the U.S. To be very impressed, we saw some pressure in those short maturities. European market wrap, Tuesday to Saturday on CNBC Asia. And now, Singtel brings you E. Hello, good evening. I'm Keith Liu. Welcome to E on CNBC. On today's show, Vodafone looks ready to hive off Japan Telecom's non-mobile operations as rival NTT receives a downgrade from Moody's on earnings concerns. We talk telcos with Balaji Bhuvarahan of Frost & Sullivan. Cable & Wireless gets licenses to operate in Hong Kong and Singapore. And it's choosing for corporate clients. We'll find out more from Jim Pitchford of Cable & Wireless Asia. And China's top PC maker surprises the market with good full-year earnings. We'll crunch them with Kitty Fock of IDC. Hello there. Well, our top story, key developments in Asia's telco space kicking off the show this Thursday. Let's uh, start with Japan Telecom. Parent Vodafone is looking to hive off the fixed line and internet businesses of its Japanese unit, apparently. Why? Well, to rid Japtel of its loss-making operations, focus, rather, on its profitable mobile arm J-Phone. The interested parties? Well, the Nikkei newspaper reports Tokyo Electric Power is in the running for Japtel's fixed line business and Sony is eyeing its internet division. TEPCO and Jeptel, though, have since denied they are in talks, and Sony has declined comment. Restructuring moves aren't new at Jeptel, though, but the latest indication is that Jeptel is looking to shed its non-mobile assets, suggesting that consolidation might be afoot. Remember, JPhone is preparing to launch its 3G service. The telco has some catching up to do. The 3G services of both rivals NTT Docomo and KDDI are already operational. Checking shares of Japan Telecom today, surging really high, 8.2% on that news. Well, meanwhile, uh, Moody's has downgraded the senior long-term debt rating of Japan's NTT to AA2 from AA1. The reason? Concerns over the increasingly competitive telco environment, which is expected to pressure NTT's earnings in the midterm, and that despite NTT's restructuring efforts and, and its growing broadband business. NTT's mobile arm Docomo, though, unaffected by the downgrade. News of the downgrade out after the market closed. Shares of NTT up by 0.4% today in Tokyo trade. And meanwhile, uh, Hutchison, Wampo, and PCCW, both in Hong Kong, have been holding their AGMs. On the Hutch front, the firm reiterated that it won't be raising its $750 million joint bid with Singapore Technologies Telemedia for the bankrupt Global Crossing. When we make a proposal, we make it in good faith so that, you know, we don't see there's necessary for us to change uh, under the certain circumstances. Of course, within the $750 million, there are some, there are some arrangements that may be beneficial to them and and also we don't uh, particular, pay, uh, particular worry us so that we will help them. But otherwise, the 750 has to stay firm. And then we would like it um, to be finished this side of the weekend. Well, creditors of Global Crossing had rejected the joint bid, saying it was way too low given the firm's $22 billion in assets. The field is now open to other bidders who have until June 20th to present their offers. And meanwhile, on PCCW's end, the telco says it won't be upping capital expenditure for the next three years. But Chief Operating Officer Michael Butcher was quick to add the quality of service won't be compromised. I think that you can look towards a capex being effectively flat year on year from last year to this year. And if we can find ways of improving that, in other words, reducing it some more, we will but only on the basis that uh, it, it is not going to affect our long-term uh, technology uh, base that we have to offer and the services and quality of services. Shares of Hutch down 2.5% in Hong Kong trade today. Pax Century, meantime, down 1.7%. 
Well, for more on the latest telco developments, let's talk with Balaji Bhuvarahan, Manager, Consulting Technology Practice with Frost and Sullivan. Balaji joins us here. Balaji, good to have you. Let's look first at Jabtel. I mean, that was the big story today coming out of, you know, Japan. Uh, nothing's been confirmed, of course, on, on how, you know, these, whether these sales are actually, uh, talks are actually happening. But what do you think uh, the market's really looking for? Actually, it's quite uh, expected from the long term Vodafone is going to sell off its, uh, you know, uh, fixed uh, network. And uh, given the, the last couple of years, uh, the performance of JPTEL, mm -hmm. I think it's a right move from uh, the Vodafone to sell off its stake and uh, concentrate on the mobile and data communication market. But at the same time, the local sentiments are acting the other way around. Uh, the right. stock price went up. Mm -hmm. So they are expecting some kind of structure uh, changes, sexual changes in JPTEL. So that would benefit uh, the market in terms of increasing the competition and in some terms of uh, concentrating on the corporate customers. Do you think with uh, JPhone on its own, it's, a it's able to actually uh, take on Docomo as well as KDDI more effectively rather than having this whole fixed line uh, burden uh, with it? Even though we talk about a lot of bundling aspects and services, but uh, it doesn't reality doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. So I think even though currently, uh, you know, JPTEL or in terms of mobile communication, they are lagging behind KDDI as well as uh, um, NTT Docomo. I think there is a fair chance Vodafone, if it concentrate on the mobile business, it could be able to take a in a long term side. Right. Okay, let's move to Hong Kong. I mean, we've heard Hutchison uh, saying that, you know, it will not be upping its stake. But seriously, I mean, at, at this point in time, 750 million, do you think other people will actually come in and try and make a higher bid for Global Crossing? Is there uh, really demand for companies like Global Crossing? I mean, we're seeing KPN Quest today, you know, uh, concerns that it will also be heading the same way, Chapter 11. Yeah, coming the market trends, it really shows I don't think any other company would go ahead and take that kind of risk to mm -hmm. really bid for it. Uh, as you rightly put it, uh, you know, KPN Quest trying to sell all its assets, some of its assets in Europe, which did not succeed as of date. And Global Crossing, as of date, we are seeing only STT and uh, Hutchison Bumpo is trying to do something. And they have time till June 20th. Some of the spokesperson already said they will even go for a lesser bid. Right. So it really shakes up all uh, the imaginary things which we had in mind earlier. It's going to really pay off. Uh, current trend also really uh, shows the data communication is really slow to pick up rather mm -hmm. what the analyst really predicted earlier. It's really going to be a huge growth market. So I think uh, it's a wait and watch game and I don't really see uh, not many players really going to take that huge risk mm -hmm. again putting themselves into uh, one more global crossing shoes. So These assets though that they have, you know, all these cables, uh, are they of any use to anyone right now? Yes, if the data communication really picks up the value again it will go up. Uh, again, I would show one of the examples like KPN Quest. In the year, the share price went down by 90%. But the moment data, data communication going to be provable, that same 90% will come back again. Right. So, but it's like a watch and uh, you know a wait and watch game. So it's, it's very difficult to uh, say anything at this point in time. Right. But in terms of corporate communications going on the data side, it's very very slow than what we predicted earlier. Still a tough. So market. it's going to tamper uh, the whole process. All right. Fair enough. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us today, Balaji Puvarahan from Foss and Sullivan there. All well, staying with Telco's uh, cable and wireless, uh, making a somewhat renewed entry into Hong Kong and Singapore, targeting the communications needs of corporate enterprises using internet protocol IP technology. Now, the company's been awarded licenses by the Hong Kong and Singapore governments to provide global voice and data communication services. Now, the licenses gives uh, cable and wireless the option to set up its own network, eliminating the need for a third-party supplier. And to that effect, the firm says it will build on its own high-performance global internet protocol or IP infrastructure. Cable and Wireless has a presence in eight Asian markets, and that includes Australia, India, as well as Japan. I'm checking shares there, Cable and Wireless, ending, well, currently unchanged at the moment. Well, for more on the firm's uh, new strategy in Asia, let's talk with Jim Pitchford, Vice President with Cable and Wireless Asia. Jim joins us from our studios in Hong Kong. Jim, good to have you on the show. Now, we have heard, of course, uh, how difficult the market is, uh, particularly for data communications. Uh, where are you going to see, wh where are you going to be heading uh, with these new licenses? 
Thank you, Keith. Yeah, obviously the, the licenses are very important to us. As you said, they give us the capability of delivering a, a true end-to-end -end connection for our customers, and that gives us a lot of ability over the quality of the service that we provide, but also the price. Obviously, there is a lot of uh, instability in the market today, and, and that's really where the opportunity uh, we have comes from. That instability drives our customers to really ask the questions about the stability of their suppliers in the market. And, and Cable and Wireless has a very strong balance sheet. That balance sheet gives the customers the confidence that they can use us for the services they need. Now, why would customers uh, really be changing uh, the way they communicate uh, from what they're actually doing now? A lot of them today depend on you know, the, the local carriers that they have been depending on for years. Yeah, so our, our strategy is very much both based on their international communication needs. Uh, we are a global company. We've got a, a very great strength in the Asian region, and we're finding a lot of customers also make decisions within Asia for their Asian-wide networks. So uh, it's more than just local communication needs. It's a, it's a very strong need for a, uh, an integrated global or regional approach to, their, uh, to give them a true solution that they can use consistently around the globe. Do you have a, a real target then in that sense, in terms of the bottom line of, of how, how many companies, or how many more companies that you, you plan to really bring under your wing? Yes, of course we do. I can't give you specific numbers today, but uh, you know, some of the, the, the high-end financial community, for example, um, uh, are very key to us. Uh, a lot of the media companies give us a lot of bandwidth these days. Um, those are very high value customers for us and they're, they're looking for the sort of services we can provide. We've also been investing a lot, as, as you may know, uh, in new acquisitions recently, uh, Digital Island from the US and Exodus from the US, the, the world's leading managed hosting company. They give us a set of skills that, that our companies, our customers here are really looking for. They allow us to, to really get inside uh, the business operations of those companies and provide them with solutions that they were unable to deliver in the past. All right, best of luck then. Jim Pitchford, Vice President with Cable and Wireless Asia, joining us out of Hong Kong. We're headed for our first break now, but we will pause for a look at shares of Deutsche Telekom. That's after short this Solomon Smith Barney cut its target price on Deutsche's shares due to week Q1 results, uh, which of course were announced yesterday. Stay with us. E, presented by Singtel, the best Asian telecom operator four years running. And now, Singtel presents Smart Talk.